Hi guys, welcome back to Keith's Garage. Here we find ourselves bent over another block. We are finally making progress on the engine for my 1938 Plymouth. Looking forward to getting that car back on the road. It's gonna be a while yet. This is a winter project for me. So I'm going to walk you through some of the things I'm doing. I'm not gonna go, I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna go through every little detail about how to rebuild an engine. There's some other videos online. I've seen them on YouTube, so seek those out. I'll just share some of my thoughts and some of the things I do as I'm going through the engine. Um, earlier in the earlier video, I was spraying the engine with a heavy greaser, like a sealant, a lubricant, a heavy oil. It was aerosol, and I did that because uh, I picked the engine up from the machine shop back in uh, June, and uh, I knew I wasn't gonna rebuild it till the fall and throughout the winter. I didn't want it to rust, so I just sprayed it down. I washed it completely, as you saw, and then I sprayed it down to uh, seal everything up, prevent it from rusting. And now I'm going through it. Uh, I'm going to start. First thing I'm going to do is um, deal with the valves. I'm going to do them now, and um, that way I can uh, lap in all my valves. They're all brand new. I had a valve grind done at the machine shop. And then I'm gonna wash the block again and clean it up again and get rid of any of that valve lapping compound, get it right out completely. And uh, I've uh, been lapping valve valves all day. So I'll kind of show you what I did there. I mean, not all day, but I, I spent a few hours at it today. And uh, I had an issue with one valve seat. It's it just, well, let's just say this is probably going back to the machine shop to deal with this valve seat issue I'm having. So check it out, stay tuned. Thanks for dialing in. Thanks to all my repeat uh, viewers that come back for every video. Love you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, here we go. Let's progress through some stuff. That's a tripping hazard. You want to keep anything, any kind of dirt from getting on any of your engine parts, dust. You know, my garage door stays closed. I seal it up in a garbage bag when I'm uh, done at the end of the day, tie it off. Resist the temptation to use any steel wool to clean any of your parts. Like uh, this is a, I found an NOS camshaft, brand new, original part number on it. It's a perfect match. So it's been sitting around for, uh, 70 years probably maybe a little bit of uh surface corrosion on it nothing serious just from humidity so i'm just using some uh, scotch bright just to clean it up um i'm not going to use steel wool because i don't want any little bits of steel getting in potentially in my engine the clean parts and putting a clean engine together goes a long ways in engine life it does, especially at first startup. You know, when you get right from new, you get that little bit of dirt or corrosion or whatever happening in, the, in your engine there, and it just knocks miles off your engine. And maybe while we have the camshaft out here, you just talk about a few interesting things on the camshaft. And for the beginners who maybe are learning, right? Done this just. Carry on, move on, fast forward. Right here, this gear in the middle. This is driving your oil pump on this side, your engine oil pump, as the camshaft spins. 
and on this side is driving your distributor. This is the, uh, the rear of the camshaft. There are four bearing surfaces on this camshaft. One here at the back of the block, one in the middle, another one here, one at the front of the block. This is at the front of the block. The, the, uh, they call it a camshaft bushing. It sits in a bushing that's pushed into the block, it's pressed in. Mine are already installed in my block here. And uh, it's fed oil through here. The oil comes out through uh, and lubricates the, uh, the bearing surface here. And I believe some of it comes down here and lubricates the front here as well. That, that spins on there. That's bolted to the block and it spins. I recall oil goes through there and actually comes out here and drips down. Another interesting point, you'll notice a pair of valves for each cylinder, six, five, four, three, two, one, right? Intake and exhaust for each cylinder. Right here, you get this one odd looking little lobe here and it's, uh, it's round. All the others are for valves, kind of an apex here, a point. This one is more egg shaped, elliptical. It's not perfectly round. It's offset off the center line of the camshaft and that is what's driving your fuel, mechanical fuel pump. As you spin the camshaft, this wide part hits the lever and forces it to move and it drops down on the low part of the cam here. And it's giving your camshaft, uh, sorry, your fuel pump lever mechanical action right there. When I bought this camshaft, there was no retainer on the top of it. Um, there is a woodruff key in there and a keyway cut into the center of the camshaft there on the edge. And this uh, plate, this is the mounting plate, retainer plate for the camshaft. And this here supports the camshaft timing gear, bolts on it. So I took it to a buddy, we pressed it apart, heated it up, just put a little bit of heat on there. And you know what, I'll show you that. Here we go, here's uh, us pressed it apart. So we're going to, uh, we got a couple here. We had, we had, a, we had a bad camshaft, we practiced on it. Came, our retain, retainer came off quite easily. We're gonna take the other one apart as well and pick the best parts of them all. Push it back together. So we're getting set up here to press the retainer and the gear. This is the gear retainer and this is the retaining plate for the camshaft off of the old removed camshaft. We've got this set up in a, in a press here. Nice big 55 ton. never a dull moment around here in Keith's garage. It's not me, it's my son Kyle. What are you doing Kyle? Fixing my university beater. University beater? <laughs> what are you doing? What kind of a job are you doing today? Some of our end links. What happened to the old ones? Uh, the bushings failed. It's not too bad. They're done? Yeah, here they are here. Pretty much cooked. Make a bit of a clunk. So if you're in university, why are you wrenching on cars? Because aren't you learning to do like something else? <laughs> <laughs> I've only afforded two thousand dollar cars. So. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up, Kyle? Do you want to be a mechanic? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pay other guys to do it? You know what? Yeah, no. If you make enough money, then you don't have to come and see me, and I don't have to fix it, right? So you stay in school. Right now, brand new valve. Look at the end of it here. It's nice and smooth, polished to a nice finish, but that's not what we're looking for here after, when we do our valve line. I'm gonna show you the pattern. Pay attention to that. But now let's look at the end of this valve. See that nice kind of frosted circle in the center of it all the way around, nice even in the center of the valve there. 
the valve seat area. Nice frosted. That's what we're polishing. That looks good. We want a nice even polished ring there. Then we know we've got a good valve seat area it's sitting in there square. Sitting flat. Like okay, so for this particular one valve, I'm going to show you how what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to lap all my valves here, and then I'm going to assemble and test each one. This is what I do, whether it's right or wrong. And I'll put spring, spring pressure on it and uh, crank it down, put your locks in. You don't need your camshaft in or anything. And then we're going to put some kerosene around the top surface of the valve there and see if it drips down through. If it doesn't, it holds liquid kerosene in this example. We're in good shape. I'm using a, an old spring that I took out of this engine. I have new valve springs for the entire engine. But I'm not using one right now. Okay, we're gonna make sure this area down in here is totally dry. Now, like I said, the camshaft is not in at this point. Don't need it in. I want to keep it clean. There's a handy little tool right here. Every toolbox should have a little syringe. I'm going to use some solvent. You could use kerosene. You could use diesel. I'm just putting some around the valve area here. The seat. We're going to look for leaks down on the bottom. Oh, we have a little bit of a leak, I'll show you. Okay, you see a little trail there? A little bit of moisture in the center. A little bit. We're not done. I gotta seal that up more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the spring and lap it some more. And you will develop it. All right, so I've lapped all my valves except one. This one doesn't wanna lap. When I look in, I can see the reason it doesn't want to lap is like it's not seating in its seat like it's supposed to. I can see light through it from a flashlight here. And I'm thinking that this seat here isn't cut properly. Every other valve sat nicely in its bore there in its seat. This one will not. And I cannot get it to lap. Okay, lights are out. I'll show you what I mean here. See the light shine through the valve seat? So I've got everything lapped, but I'm having trouble with these two right here. Number five cylinder. They're just not sealing. I've been lapping now for quite a while. And uh, there's an issue with the valve seats in this particular cylinder only. I can guess maybe what happened. Maybe a guy started to do a valve grind on my block and then got had to stop and do another job and then go back to it maybe and change out the tooling or something because it's not seating nicely. And I cannot get this one to lap at all. It's not even touching. the. It won't go down deep enough to touch the uh, valve seat surface. The guide is not in the way. It is not rubbing on the guide. It's just the interference here between the two surfaces are not cut the same. And I swap other valves before I lap them. It will not go in there either. They will not, they'll not, they're not sitting. And they won't seal either. So, I'm not overly impressed. Hey, how's that for a nice tight valve guide? Listen to that. <laughs> Love it. Um, that particular guide is good, but the, the seat is not. I really don't want to go all the way back down there and take my block back in again. I'm going to put some of this layout die on here and we're going to do a little cut and then we can see what's going on. This comes off with rubbing alcohol easily to clean up later. So we're going to cut in, let that dry. We're going to cut into that and see what happens.
Yeah, I've been lapping this one for the last few minutes and there's no grinding noise at all from the lapping compound. So the blue dye on there is gonna show us what's going on, where it's contacting. There's no frosting on my valve here, abrasion marks. It's not touching the valve seat. And if we look down the purple dye, it's all intact. This is the intake, this is the exhaust. The exhaust valve here is getting better. I see the contact. It's not st still sealing. I'm still seeing light go through it. Okay, I'm just about done. You know, I, I gave him all my valves when I dropped off the block to be machined and do the valve set. I gave him every valve and I guess he didn't check them, I guess. I don't know. All right, so I'm done. I spent a lot of time trying to lap that valve. I even took my hand grinder out, my hand uh, valve grind tool. Uh, it's worked before. I tried to grind that a little bit myself. I'm out of the coarse abrasive pads that it's gonna to require to cut that. So I guess it's gonna go, it's time to take it back to the machine shop. That's kind of annoying, but uh, I hope he will quickly, just quickly grind that get it right within a day or two and get it back to me. I am motivated to get this back together. Off the coast of the machine shop. Thanks for watching guys. We'll be back with more in a few days, hopefully. Have a good one.